This is where the Roma of Hermanotsa live. Like Roma everywhere in eastern Slovakia, they live on the edge of town in crowded, squalid conditions. Here, a dirty river separates them from where the white Slovaks live. From the time they are born, Roma are at a disadvantage. Babies born in this part of town, for example, are twice as likely to die as babies born to whites just up the road. It's a cold Saturday morning and some of the Roma have come to church in the white part of town. They've come for the wedding of Rosalia and Radislav. Just as soon as the white Slovaks leave the church, the wedding will begin. Rosalia and Radislav have been together for eight years and have two young daughters. To their great sadness and disappointment, this marriage will not be blessed with any more children. Rosalia's youngest child, Yitka, was born six years ago. Rosalia clearly remembers the day when her labour began and she was taken to hospital. As far as Rosalia knew, there were no problems with the birth. Both she and her baby were healthy. However, as the years wore on, Rosalia became increasingly perplexed as to why she never fell pregnant again. The mystery ended when this woman came into her life. Barbara Bukowska is a lawyer based in Prague in the Czech Republic. She's one of the authors of a report that has rocked Slovakia. This report confirmed long-standing claims that Roma women are being sterilised without their full consent. And usually it's happening on the delivery table. That woman is brought to the hospital, she's uh, in delivery, and uh, for whatever reasons she has to have cesarean sections, they give her anaesthesia and then she's undergoing cesarean section and then during the cesarean section her uh, fallopian tubes are tied. Last year, Barbara Bukowska led a team of researchers to some of the Roma settlements in Slovakia. From an extremely small sample, they found over 100 cases of women who'd been sterilised in questionable circumstances. It's believed that these 100 cases are just the tip of the iceberg. But as for sterilization, we found out that it's not isolated incident. It's not incident that would be um, limited to one hospital or one doctor. It's a practice, and it's a practice that's been continuing in Slovakia for decades. On behalf of some women, Barbara gained access to their medical files. They, and this is how they mark the files with with R. So, for for instance, this one. So, R that she's Romni. It was in these files that Barbara discovered the answer to the question haunting women like Rosalia. So there were cases where women told you they didn't know why they couldn't conceive and then you checked their yeah. files and... and there was a written that she requests sterilisation, like this one. This, this one. is Rosalia's file. With Rosalia's permission, Barbara had checked her medical records at the hospital where she last gave birth. Barbara came to Hermanotsa to deliver the bad news. Barbara came to me and 
tam bolo, bola zistiť v tom ono, karte a tam bolo napísané, že ja som si o to žiadala sama, že by mi zrobili, že by som už nemala deti. No už vôbec nič. Rosalia then had to pass on the news to her partner Radoslav. While Rosalia's file says she consented to being sterilised and has a signature that purports to be hers, she says this is not true. Ta doktor vôbec nič nevysvetlil. A pýtal si, aké meno tam, no nám som varila, keď chlapec bude Robert, no a keď zivče Jitka. A veci nič už nepamätám. Som pošla tam, dali mi ono... Narkózu. Narkózu, inekcie, nejaké, a už po to si už nepamätám. Popísal asi nejaký dokument, papier, predo alebo po operácii? Nič, nič, všem nepíšam. Len meno, co varili, jaké dáce meno, no toto, veci nižšie tam nedovarajú. Tako sami rúcaci. Veronika is 23 years old. She did sign a consent form for sterilisation, but under extreme conditions. Veronica was 19 when she went into labour with her second child. She arrived at the hospital alone and in pain. The doctor told her she would be having a caesarean and that she needed to be sterilised because it would be dangerous for her to ever have another baby. To je už riskantné, a keď pridete tu, tá už na vaši riziku. Ako dlho diskutoval s vami v minútach alebo v sekundách? Čo znamená sterilizácia? V sekundách? Nepamätám sa. Ale mi, jak pridesli toto papiere, mi povedali, že ako budem v tom prípade, no... Išli ešte sa by ruky umiť, no sme išli. Such was Veronica's naivety, she wasn't even sure what sterilisation meant. Once the operation was over, she asked the doctor when she could have children again. She now deeply regrets signing. <laughs> Keď chcete, môžeme vám dám dánu a môžete mať o 5, o 10 roky, keď chcete. Ale oni nie, oni nič. Jak prišli s takým veľkým papierom, no dali mi podpísať, že keď budem mať trece, môžem aj umre, že to je riskantná operácia treťa. No, ja som sa podpísala. Lebo som veľmi plakala, som sa bála, že už aj z toho druhu budem mať čísarsky. According to Barbara, the majority of cases are like Veronica's. Women who did sign, but under duress, usually on the delivery table. When women are told that the next pregnancy would be uh, endangered, the, that during the next pregnancy she or her baby would die, and that's why she has to sign this paper and the paper is concerned with sterilization. Veronica already has two children, but wishes she could have more. So does her mother. Her inability to have more children has also affected Veronica's relationship with her husband. Keď budú mať deti po ako teraz no už má ona 
sedem, tam mala štyri, ak ich otec toto zrobil, že ak ich mal druhé decko. Vše vádzal som, že nebudem mať zeci. Tak jak boli malé, to ešte bolo dobre. Jak už vyrastie, tak už bol medzi nami problém. This is Preshov New Maternity Hospital. Both Rosalia and Veronica were sterilised here. And according to Barbara Bukowska's report, this hospital is one of the worst offenders. Dr Caselli is the head physician in the gynaecology department. I think that this is the right thing that they have done in terms of the financial disadvantage of their own workers and the Roma. I think that Mr. Bukovsky, I would like to see her, because when she comes here, we will have to stop her today. Dr. Caselli says sterilizations are only ever performed because of medical necessity. We have no one who would not have signed sterilization. When we went to work from two doctors, it was done then when she had two or more caesars, so it was a risk of damage from the doctors. Then we recommended her that we need to do sterilization to make the next section of the health risk. Every one of them is signed, we have it documented. Critics argue it's not necessarily a risk for a woman to have more than two caesareans. But even still, this is not the real issue. This is not about it. This is not whether the sterilization was necessary or not. This is about the consent. This is about the situation when the woman gave the consent and whether it was informed consent. There is a long history of racism and institutional discrimination against the Roma in Slovakia. Here in Košice, the regional capital of eastern Slovakia, you won't see many Roma faces. This is despite the fact the east is where the majority of Roma live. But drive just a few kilometres out of town and you'll come to Lunik 9, Central Europe's biggest Roma ghetto. The deputy mayor tells me that around 5,000 Roma live here, the majority in abject poverty. So the communist period uh, did not treat everyone equally, and come 1989, Roma were living apart from whites in slums. Roma were uh, doing the most menial labor. Uh, since the end of communism, this country has had a segregated school system. Um, Employment discrimination is absolutely the norm, and nobody does anything about it. Judd Nuremberg works for the Carpathian Foundation, an NGO that deals mainly with development. He's American, but of Romani descent, and has lived and worked in the region for nearly a decade. He's been deeply involved in Roma projects and issues. I think that most Slovaks, including those that I would call uh, left of center politically, uh, including those who I think are very intelligent and, and open-minded, um, including lots of different types of people, pretty much all seem to believe that, that, that Roma are uh, culturally inferior, that Roma don't respect work as much as whites, that Roma don't believe in education the way whites do, um, by the way, if this doesn't go without saying, I think all this is false and, and it is, is dumb bigotry, but uh, 
for the Slovaks, this doesn't go without saying. The discrimination faced by the people in this ghetto extends to health care. Roma women are only allowed to visit the local doctor one day a week. The other days are reserved for white women. <laughs> Vilma knows the health care system well. Little Eloise is her eighth child. The final insult from the doctor, though, was during labour. No, to už jak dieťko sa tlačilo na svet počas bolesti, vtedy sa mi otočil chrbtom, začal sa vyškierať a hovorí, že fuj, cigánka smrdáva. On sa ma vôbec ani nechcel dotýkať. We heard complaints and it was not in one settlement and not by one woman, but by many women who didn't know each other and who were having same complaints that they were mistreated in the hospitals, that they were beaten. Um, Doctors are and nurses are screaming at them uh, racist slanders, and there are special rooms, segregated rooms for uh, Roma women, and segregated facilities as dining rooms or toilets, bathrooms. Back at Preshov Hospital, Dr. Kiseli denies Roma women are discriminated against. However, he does want to point out that Roma are different. Typický je ten rozdiel, že títo z tých osad prichádzajú v, 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 sú veľmi zaostali po stránke hygienickej, po stránke sociálnej, kultúrnej, psychickej a v tom zmysle. Z, 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 z mesta, čo idú, sa vyrovnajú bielým, ale tam sú v komunitách, nemajú záujem o nič. Oni žijú v tej komunite, nechodia do školy, the doctor then offers to show me something to illustrate his point, a newborn Roma baby with a deformity. Nechodia do prenatálnych poradní, toto je treba povedať, a z toho sú chorí. A rodia sa nám také deti, ak sa rodia, chodí ukázať toto hydrocefalus, hej? No. Hada, mi umri od hladu. The head nurse, Adela Bednarikova, takes me to go and see this baby. She shares the doctor's assessment of Rom women from settlements. No a tieto romské pacientky z tých osad, tak vám poviem, že to je zdegenerovaná rasa. Nie, neviem, ako vy to preložíte teraz, ale tak vám to poviem, pretože oni vlastne majú pomer medzi brat so sestrou, otec s sérou, matka so synom a tak ďalej. A čím ďalej tá generácia, tá najmladšia generácia je veľmi zdegenerovaná. Náš dojem z toho všetkého je taký, že oni tie deti plodia či, čím ďalej tým viacej kvo, kvo z tej finančnej stránky, že mali, mali proste ako možnosť dostať na nich Prvám ukážem oddelenie, ako ležia pacienti a tak, hej. From what I see, it's clear that there is segregation. There are rooms for the Roma and rooms for the whites. Oni sa segregujú sami. Oni sa segregujú sami, tak vám poviem, že napríklad my sme ich dávali ku bielým pacientkám, riadne s bielými pacientkami ležať a oni s bielými odmietajú ležať. Oni radšej si lahnú dve do jednej posteli, ako by mali ostať na izbe s bielými. Ináč, tak vám poviem, že tuto máme jedaleň a chodia spolu rómske pacienty s bielými, ktoré ľudia nebudú, oni nesegregujeme ich, že bielé sa najdia a rómky, ale spoločne chodia na stravu. Finally, we reach our destination, the deformed Roma baby, and I'm passed on to the hospital's head paediatrician, Dr. Maria Sinajova. Hi. 
je jedno také dieťatko, čo tam mamka bola, neviem, keď preložíte to dáčo, že ani 16 rokov nemá, ani chodila do poradne, hydrocefalus, ani chodila do poradne, lebo nechcela chodiť. This baby is not expected to live for more than a few months. The doctor blames the mother. To je ich mentalita, v ktorú nepochopíme. To je ich mentalita, ktorú nepochopíme. Kto chce, bude chodiť. Kto nechce, nebude chodiť. Tekúte na likvo a všetko. Dr. Sinejova claims the Roma won't do anything unless they get paid. Že museli vtedy dvakrát alebo trikrát navštíviť poradňu, kedysi, a dostali pôrodné a sociálne. Teraz sa to dá každému, takže pre nich už nič neplatí, len finančné postih. Či sú nejaké riešenia pre tie rovky, pre ich starostlivosť, že by vlastne parodili nejaké zdravšie deti? Lepší prístup a zodpovednosť a ten materinský cit, ktorý majú v sebe, to ja neviem. Materinský cit, aby v nich sa konečne prebudil a že by... I think the first thing to, to do is to admit that the, the fundamental problem here is that we've got nurses and doctors who don't think that Roma are, are human beings. Uh, apparently they don't think that Roma are even mammals. <laughs> is there a mammal that lacks maternal instincts? Um, it, I don't think we should try to address the problem by uh, Uh, looking too deeply at the Romani community, I think we need to start by, by asking what can we do about the fact that a hospital is staffed by people that think that, that non-whites lack basic, uh, basic human characteristics like a love for one's own children. Apart from a general climate of racism, there are several possible explanations for the sterilization of Roma women. A pressing concern for the doctors and nurses of Slovakia is the fear that their white race will be outbred by the Roma. Že keby to ozaj bola pravda, toto čo oni tvrdia, tak nestane sa nám toto, že o 10 rokov ich bude toľko ako nás. To verte tomu, že nie. No. the Roma birth rate is common in Slovakia. It's discussed widely, even at official levels. A mayor in eastern Slovakia, for example, is proposing Chinese-style limits on the number of children Roma can have. The leader of an opposition political party wants Roma men to be paid to be sterilized. Doctors also genuinely believe that you know Roma are going to outnumber the Slovaks in society, so they should do something with that. And I think that what they do is within the, the framework of this societal fear or societal myth. And um, they are thinking that they're justified to do what they do and because they are helping Slovakia. It could also be the case that doctors in Slovakia are just continuing a long-established practice. Under communism, many Roma women were sterilised in questionable circumstances because of a policy that offered financial incentives for sterilisation. And uh, that stopped because the law was amended in 1990, early 1990, but the, nevertheless the practice continues and the doctors who are doing it, they are still continuing. Some of them were young doctors then, and now they are chiefs of the departments of the hospitals. The Slovak government's response has been one of scepticism and hostility. Ingrid Ginova has been on the receiving end of this. She was sterilised two and a half years ago when she was just 16. Since the report came out, she's spoken publicly about her ordeal and is one of only two women pressing criminal charges. Today she's meeting with her lawyer and a human rights activist. Mm. 
už nie som prázdna, nemôžem nič zo seba dať napríklad život môjmu dieťaťu, že mohla som mať tú radosť a ten tú bolesť, ale ne, nemôžem ani hovoriť. Shortly after her name appeared in local and international media, Ingrid received a visit from the local police. Prišiel tu polica, tam teraz ten, kde on stojí, tam zastal a z auta hovoril mena, že ktoré majú ísť do luku. No a moje meno povedali, koľko ti zaplatili, aby si toho doktora zažalovala. A ja som mu povedala, u mňa nejaké peniaze nezaplatili, nič. A potom už... Ingrid was then taken to the local police station with one other woman. They were told they would be sent to jail if their claims were not proven. As well as threatening Roma women with imprisonment, the Slovak government warned the authors of the report that they too could be charged if the complaints weren't proven. Government spokesman Peter McClossey. The government has recently concluded the major part of an investigation into the report, finding the allegations are without factual basis. This investigation relied on reviewing the records of one hospital, essentially just checking that signatures were in place. Walking around the settlement where Ingrid lives, we discover that her village is now paying a price for her decision to speak out. People here tell us that the local hospital, the hospital against which Ingrid made her complaint, is venting its anger against the village. This woman did not want to be filmed. The hospital in question denies it is refusing to treat Roma from Ingrid's village. But when I was filming outside, it became clear that the allegations of forced sterilizations have touched a raw nerve here. I'm approached by a doctor from the hospital. It's unclear whether he realizes I'm filming him. This is a sensitive issue for Slovakia, particularly at a time when it's preparing to enter the European Union and the country's human rights record is on display. Luckily for Slovakia, the reports of forced sterilization have barely raised a murmur in Brussels. The state seems to have a stronger interest in punishing the victims for having embarrassed Slovakia by speaking out than in punishing the people who, who misbehaved. 
I think that's very concerning. I'm surprised that the European Union is, is as uh, nonchalant about the whole matter as it is. The women who've been sterilised have been left only with questions and the unfulfilled desire for more children. It's a cold Saturday morning and some of the Roma have come to church in the white part of town. They've come for the wedding of Rosalia and Radislav. Just as soon as the white Slovaks leave the church, the wedding will begin. Rosalia and Radislav have been together for eight years and have two young daughters. To their great sadness and disappointment, this marriage will not be blessed with any more children. Rosalia's youngest child, Yitka, was born six years ago. Rosalia clearly remembers the day when her labour began and she was taken to hospital. This is where the Roma of Hermanotsa live. Like Roma everywhere in eastern Slovakia, they live on the edge of town, in crowded, squalid conditions. Here, a dirty river separates them from where the white Slovaks live. From the time they are born, Roma are at a disadvantage. Babies born in this part of town, for example, are twice as likely to die as babies born to whites just up the road. This one, so R, that she's Romney. It was in these files that Barbara discovered the answer to the question haunting women like Rosalia. So there were cases where women told you they didn't know why they couldn't conceive and then you check their yeah. files and... and there was written that she requests sterilisation, like this one. This, this one. is Rosalia's file. With Rosalia's permission, Barbara had checked her medical records at the hospital where she last gave birth. Barbara came to Hermanotsa to deliver the bad news. Rosalia then had to pass on the news to her partner, Radislav. As far as Rosalia knew, there were no problems with the birth. Both she and her baby were healthy. However, as the years wore on, Rosalia became increasingly perplexed as to why she never fell pregnant again.
The mystery ended when this woman came into her life. Barbara Bukowska is a lawyer based in Prague in the Czech Republic. She's one of the authors of a report that has rocked Slovakia. This report confirmed long-standing claims that Roma women are being sterilised without their full consent. And usually it's happening on the delivery table. That woman is brought to the hospital, she's uh, in delivery, and uh, for whatever reasons she has to have cesarean sections. They give her anesthesia, and then she's undergoing cesarean section, and then during the cesarean section her uh, fallopian tubes are tied. Last year, Barbara Bukowska led a team of researchers to some of the Roma settlements in Slovakia. From an extremely small sample, they found over 100 cases of women who'd been sterilised in questionable circumstances. It's believed that these 100 cases are just the tip of the iceberg. But as for sterilisation, we found out that it's not isolated incident. It's not an incident that would be um, limited to one hospital or one doctor. It's a practice, and it's a practice that's been continuing in Slovakia for decades. On behalf of some women, Barbara gained access to their medical files. They, and this is how they mark the files with, with R. So, for, for instance, 